I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, wish Coach Dooley a happy birthday. And uh, he they had a nice surprise for him um, the other day. And uh, certainly happy for him to celebrate his 90th, I guess it was. So that's a heck of a deal. I hope I can get there one day. Um, but, you know, looking back at the tape, I think it's never as good as it seems and it's never as bad as it seems. And that's kind of the mantra coaches use. And to be honest, it's true. So it's never, you know, you go to the tape to watch it and you think you played really good. Then you see glaring mistakes and errors that you made that you got away with. And, um, you know, it, 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 it brings you back to reality really quick on Saturday night and Sunday morning when you watch that tape. But I was pleased with the way our players went about the connection piece. We challenged them to stay connected and uh, be connected. There was a lot of examples of guys celebrating other guys' plays. So I thought that was awesome uh, from our guys. Um, but now it's moving on to uh, a guy I know a lot about and a program I have a lot of respect for. And he's done a tremendous job everywhere he's been. And uh, it'll be a challenge for us uh, getting ready for Sanford at home on Saturday. Yeah, Kirby, you, uh, you kind of forewarned us to expect the unexpected. Obviously, you guys came out in no huddle. But in terms of the expecting the unexpected from all those freshmen, what would you say about the young players that saw their first uh, opportunities on that big stage? They have a lot to improve on. The most obvious is that there was a lot of mistakes. I mean, mistakes that even they'll tell you are like, we call them WTFs. Like there's just like a lot of things that are like, why did you do that? You didn't do that all year. And um, they, 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 they have a, the largest growth for those guys is game one, two, three um, in terms of reaction to their mistakes. And, you know, what makes a guy, I've always wondered, you know, like who's going to sell the potion that allows a player not to make the most glaring mistake, um, things that you've repped a lot. And, you know, you have those in first game. I've come to accept them, and it's more what your response is to them. And I guess we'll get to find out what those young freshmen's response is this week. Yeah, Kirby, you mentioned the other day that you feel the staff here is the best it's ever been. I just want to follow up on that and see what makes it that right now, you think, especially when you've added four new coaches to the staff coming into this year? The buy-in of those four coaches, the alignment, the understanding of – this program's bigger than me, and that I'll sacrifice for the program. They understand their role. They've done what they've been asked to do, and uh, they embrace it. And there's a lot of positive energy and enthusiasm at practice and at work. So it's created a, a really good uh, kind of connection among the staff. Coach, a little bit of an operations question. Uh, notice Stetson holding uh, on the placement kicks. Uh, just it, it is what went into decision to, uh, of of doing that and. What are the logistics involved? You know, obviously those guys are up on another field a lot of the time, but uh, um, say obviously you're comfortable with him having enough work and being able to handle that responsibility. Yeah, he's held ever since he's been here. I mean, he's held probably a thousand times. He was he was Camaro's backup holder, so it was like it wasn't a new thing. It was we lost the guy that held before, so we go to the next best holder or the guy that's next up, and we're training a guy for when Stetson's not here. So it's. Uh, it's one of those things that I, I think is important to the kicker to have who they're comfortable with and, uh, and that those two guys get to spend time together, and, and they do. They take a lot of time after practice, pre-practice, pre-game uh, to make sure they're on the same page. Kerry, we saw Ladd make some plays on Saturday. Just what kind of growth have you seen from him even you know, from this last offseason going into this season? Probably confidence. Ladd's always been a good player. Um, that's not something new. He's always been an extremely hard worker. He's dependable. He's conscientious. It's important to him. He gives you everything he's got every day. And uh, the, the biggest difference is, you know, he has confidence in himself to perform because he performed on big stages last year. And when you're one of these guys that has confidence, talent, and you work really hard, then the sky's the limit for you. And he's, he's worked really hard each and every, every day. And he knows the things he's still got to work on. And he's got a lot of those things, too. Hey, Kirby, uh, do you think you found your best five offensive linemen yet? And then what did you make of Amarius Mims on Saturday? I noticed he got in there, I think, the third series of the game for you guys at right tackle. Yeah, you're constantly in search of the best five guys, right? It's not on a, a marker where we say we got the best five. It's a continuum. It's like, what do they do today at practice? Because you're only as good as your last practice. So, like, how are they going to perform today? How are they going to do tomorrow? How are they going to do the next day? How do they do the next matchup? How do they do when things get tight, when pressure grows, when things don't go well? We, we didn't see that. 
you know, we didn't have a situation where there was a lot of adversity or, or required a lot of com composure. So we'll figure out who those best guys are as we go along. Morris did a good job uh, in the game. He came in, I think, the third series, um, played with some confidence. Um, you know, those guys getting ex experience is critical so they're ready to play when their opportunity comes um, every down. And I uh, think early in the season especially, those guys' conditioning level, um, it, it helps to have three guys playing at those positions. Coach, getting back to Ladd again, but also A.D. Mitchell, what's the biggest improvements you think those both of those young guys have made from last year to right now? Confidence. They're both, you know, much more confidence and, and uh, in the system a second year. So, you know, there's, there's, you know, every play you run, there's a reaction to what the defense does. They've seen what the defense does at a higher level. So the number of times they've run a play and had to react to something, it's almost inf infinite. And they, they now are starting to get where they can react faster. Kirby, I know you supported a 12-team playoff. Ultimately, do you, do you think having 12 teams is better for Georgia football in terms of being able to win championships? I don't know how it affects Georgia personally. Um, yeah, and I think I'm hesitant to say that just supported it. I, I wouldn't say that I've been clearly in one camp over the other. I think that there's some good and bad to both, and I don't think we know the repercussions of going to 12 over four. And um, there's been some good things about four. There'll probably be some good things about 12. It's just everybody loves change. and. Uh, it's it's on a continuum, so it's like you know th th there'll be somebody complaining about something about twelve. So I don't really get into whether or not it's going to be beneficial for us or not because I think it's year to year um, on what kind of team you have and how the teams do in the country. Kirby, on playing uh, FCS teams, I know you, you talked about the importance for it financially for these schools. The direction that college football is going, I know it's uncertain whether. SEC goes to nine games yet, but do you think and do you want to continue to play these games going into the future? You know, I think it depends on where it goes, um, what they require you to do, and, and where the, the FCS, some of those conferences end up uh, with the realignment and some of the things. It's going to depend a lot on what you talked about, the scheduling model of how many conference games you're playing. Um, I do know that it's critical for these programs to be able to survive, and look, high schools are our feeder programs just like we are for the NFL. And if you're going to have good high school programs, you got to have kids getting opportunities to play at all levels because there's a lot more kids playing at a non-Power 5 level than at the Power 5 level. So if your supplier of talent and the growth of the game comes from your youth sports and your high school sports, you're going to diminish that as these programs fade away. And some of these programs cannot, cannot survive without these games. That doesn't mean that I embrace them and love them. It just means that the programs can't survive uh, without these without these kind of funding and without these games. Going back 20 years when you were hired at Valdosta State by Coach Hacker, Coach Hatcher, what were some things that you took away from that experience and coaching under him? Uh, you know, his his charisma. He's uh, he's always been one of the best recruiters in terms of his relationships with high school coaches. Uh, was incredible. His, uh, his disposition with the team uh, was always confident and um, just believed that we could win every game. And he, he, he embodied that. He, he, he embraced that. His players love playing for him because of the energy he exudes with the players. Hey, Coach. Um, I get he came in protecting a lead, but can you, do you have any takeaways from Beck's performance on Saturday? Yeah, Carson was very calm, cool, and collected. His disposition is such that the moment's not too big for him, like he's been uh, multiple times before. I thought he did a good job. He, he he made some good decisions and had a couple poor decisions, and I think he could be the first to tell you that he would uh, would like to improve on some of those. But the good thing is he got to come in and have an opportunity and, and run the offense where it wasn't just a, a run-oriented system just to end the game. Uh, yeah, you guys are filling some – Pretty big shoes there on the defensive line, and you turned to Michael Williams to to play a lot of snaps for you. Can can you talk about kind of what led to you know it allowed him to earn that time, and and what you thought about the way he played on Saturday? Yeah, practices led to it, just like they'll lead to him not starting if he doesn't practice well. It's not real hard for us. I mean, you you base it on who practices the best, who gives you the best chance to win, and uh, he's done that really since he's got here. His work ethic and his humility has been. Uh, off the charts, and um, if he continues to do that, coupled with his ability, then he'll probably continue to start. But uh, he's got to play well, and uh, he's got to play big for a guy that's, you know, 260, 265. 
Kirby, Sanford's coming off a game where with the first time starting quarterback, he threw four touchdowns. Just with Coach Hatcher's offense, what are the challenges of trying to stop their offense? Well, I mean, they do a lot of different things. They do a good job in the passing game. They have a lot of confidence in the passing game. Um, quarterback came in, played really well against Kennesaw State. Uh, they, they, they believe in throwing the ball. Um, and, they, you know, they, they, people mistake that they can run the ball as well. They did a good job at the end of the game to be able to run the clock out and handle that. You know, I think you look and see what they did last year against Florida and throwing the ball all over the field and scoring points. They did an incredible job. Um, you know, this is for them, for their players, this is an opportunity to play you know, on a really large stage. And uh, Chris Coach Hatcher has a great, does a great job of, of getting his team prepared for moments like this and confidence in throwing the ball. Yeah, Kirby, you mentioned after the game that you all wanted to get Malachi Starks in the game early, wanted to make sure you did that. I know safety is a position where you kind of want to have two guys in role with them. So what's the plan look like in terms of getting him experience? What was the plan looking like in terms of getting him in the game early against Oregon? How important was that for you all? Well, we just talked about how to play the players. We had a plan all along, uh, all depending on how he practiced in fall camp and, and how he grew. And um, we, we, we have a plan on every player. We talk about every player and where they are and, and what our plan is, and that plan can change in game. And The plan was to get him in uh, early, and uh, we did. And you know, He made a few mis mistakes, and he made a few plays, and uh, we got to try to limit the mistakes. Kirby, having gone back and watched the film, what did you make of the play of your inside linebackers, specifically Smile Munden? Well, I think those guys had some uh, – WTFs, and they, they have to improve on those. They can't have those in order to be elite players. But they play with confidence, and we call it, you know, being loud and wrong is better than quiet and right. And they, they, they had some moments they were loud and wrong, but they were confident in what they called. Um, and it was, you know, it, it, when you go with a team that plays some tempo and some hurry up, it creates a little chaos. And I thought the, those guys uh, managed that well. They managed the leadership, leadership position well. Physically, there's things we can improve on in terms of toughness, tackling. Uh, all the guys can. I mean, we didn't we didn't tackle the man with the ball real well. Yeah, hey Kirby, I know Chris Smith said he had a stinger. Is there any sort of limitation on him this week? And then having a veteran like there back that back there at safety who's able to make the play like he did against Bo Nix on that interception. How valuable is that for a defense that does have to replace a lot from last season? Well, it's important. Uh, all the pieces we have that have played are integral to make the other pieces play well. So Chris is a piece that's played, and he brings a lot of confidence to the other players around him, uh, especially in the eye of a storm. And, you know, like I told the players today, we asked for composure and connection. We got a lot of connection. We don't really know. We never really got tested, so it's not, it's not, not their fault. But they didn't get tested in the composure category, and that's going to come. That, and when that time comes, are you going to be ready for that storm? And Chris is a guy – that you feel pretty good about. Kirby, what did you see in the performance of Javon Bullard? We saw he kind of got the start. You mentioned he was pretty tough. Uh, what did you see when you went back and watched the tape? Um, I think Javon, be first to tell you, he probably had some first game jitters like the other guys and uh, a couple times where he didn't get lined up right, maybe didn't have his eyes in the right place. Um, he plays really hard. He plays really physical. He's going to continue to get matched up on, on some big guys. He's got to play big for a guy that's not a uh, real big size. but. He, he, he's another guy that, that doesn't back down from contact and um, works really hard every day. He gives you everything he's got, and he's a starter, I think, on every special teams too, which is credit to the way he plays. Kirby, I know you're hyper-focused on your team, but do you, do you look up at the scoreboard? Do you see a, a different East division this year, one and two? How important was it for your guys to have that sort of success in an Oprah with so many young players? Yeah, I'm focused on us. I mean, I'm, I'm focused on how we can get better because we've got so many – glaring things that we can improve on and uh, that's going to be critical how mature our team is to uh, to grow look standards don't need motivation so when you look at it if, if you play to a standard you don't need motivation from outside sources I don't care if it's who we're playing who we're gonna play how somebody else is playing standards don't need motivation so if we're a mature team then we'll go practice today to our standards Kirby, is there a difference in how much you learn about your team in an opening week? Like, obviously this year, a blowout win compared to last year at Clemson, it was tight for the whole game. Is there a way you, we, we, how much you learn about your team? 
you know, I, I, I don't know how to answer that because, I mean, each, each one I think you learn something. You know, I think you learn something valuable about your team and their approach to the game. A lot more learned in the steps leading up to the game and during the game than of the result of the game. You know, I don't I, – uh, you guys are about results. I'm about the process of how we went about the game. How did we do in the game? How did we do as coaches? How did we do as players during the game? Halftime adjustments, end of game, a lot more than I am just – the result and what we learned from the result because the result came from what we did during it. Kirby, I got a Stetson question. Um, you know, after the Alabama loss last season, there was a lot of noise about whether you guys should make a quarterback change, but I think you were pretty quick. You were out recruiting the day after saying, you know, that, that you didn't really look at it, at a change. Um, what, what did you see that obviously the last three games he's played very well. What, what did you see uh, at that point knowing that this was a guy that, that you needed to stick with? Uh, it wasn't at that point. It's, it's you know, y you guys don't see every single practice, every single rep that led up to the Alabama game and all the reps from whatever, South Carolina, from the time he played UAB all the way through. There's millions of reps you don't see against a pretty good defense, against a pretty elite defense. So there was enough of that to convince me that we were going with the right guy for who we were and who we needed to be. He gave us the best chance to win, and it didn't take a lot of conviction to stick to that. And it doesn't really matter what people say outside of our organization. It matters what we think in it, and we had conviction on that. Coach, uh, Nazir Stackhouse was another guy that played a pretty prominent role on de defense. Could you just uh, talk a little bit about what you've seen from him? And it seems like a, he's a, a pretty personable guy. It looks like he's got a pretty big TikTok following, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, do you, is that personality reflective of the Nazir Stackhouse you know? Yeah, I don't know how to answer the last part. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I've never seen any of his TikToks, so I, I wouldn't really know. Um, I'm a lot more concerned with how he plays on the field and how he handles himself off the field and, and all the things he does uh, to help our team. He's, he's worked himself to get better. He's gotten in better shape. I think Trey is one of the best developers of defensive linemen in the country, and this is a guy that – that, hey, he needed development. He came in here really raw, and he's, he wasn't the player when he got here that he is today. He's come a long way, and he can still get better. Um, but he's one of our thicker, tougher guys that, that can anchor. And uh, if he continues to get better, it gives us a chance to have a really physical presence in there. Kirby, you, you spent the kind of the whole offseason, national champions, and all, everything that comes with that. I'm sure there was a – you know, point two weeks whenever that you wanted everybody to kind of flush it, move on, let's get ready for the next season. Is there a sense of relief now that that first game's out of the way? And, and I mean, I know the journey had began far before that, but that it actually you're back into a season and, and you're going, uh, you know, full speed ahead now. There's never relief. I mean, I don't think relief is an is a adjective to that comes anything positive because when you become relieved, you become complacent, and that's just not who we are. So there's no – I just don't – you don't approach things that way. I don't think from a mental standpoint it's good to approach it from relief. Kirby, can you tell us a little bit about what you saw in Oscar Delp when he got on the field and maybe what Arie Gilbert could do to see the field a little bit more? Yeah, I thought both those guys uh, got to go in the game, try to gain some confidence. Um, certainly they got two good players playing in front of them. Uh, we think the sky's the limit for both those guys, and looking forward to seeing them work today. Two more questions. One more. All right, thank you. Thanks, guys.